as you know better than I, Matt, the U.S. has a lot of uh, weapons programs, military initiatives designed to deal with the growing Chinese challenge in the Indo-Pacific. Um, even so, President Biden decided last year, and Xi Jinping seems to have made the same decision at the Bali summit, that uh, they, they both wanted a floor under this deteriorating, increasingly competitive relationship. That, that was, the, to me, the outcome of the Bali meeting. Do you think that that's a good idea to have a, a floor, uh, even as we compete uh, ever more intensely? Yeah, look, I, I, I'm uh, strongly in favor of high level uh, contact between President Biden and, and Xi Jinping. I think it's uh, uh, this, this is the single most important channel between the two countries, right? There, 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 there used to be a lot of activity that was taking place at a working level that I think um, did not end up uh, uh, serving the strategic purpose that we hoped it would. But what we, but at the highest level, given that Xi Jinping is really the only person authorized to make decisions anymore in, in that society on the economy, on, on military matters and diplomacy, uh, it, it is important for President Biden to maintain uh, regular contact by phone and in person with the uh, uh, with Xi. Look, it, put it, the, the Biden administration uses the term guardrails, uh, uh, you use the term putting a floor under the relationship. That, I think that that is, uh, uh, that is all well and good. I think that we should, we should uh, make the effort to try to lay out a vision for what a, um, a, uh, a, a reasonable relationship might look like. I, I used to think back um, to uh, the Chinese premier Zhu Rongji, uh, who used to say, you know, our relations with the United States are, are never going to be great, but they also don't need to be, uh, you know, horrendous. Uh, that's not a bad place to aim for. But as we do it, we should not be um, uh, overly wishful in our thinking that that Beijing is going to reciprocate, because so far the 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 uh, indicators are that Beijing is not willing to reciprocate. If if you look at Xi Jinping's the compendium of what he's been talking about for 10 years, he believes that China has now uh, reached what he calls, you know, uh, 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 an opportunity unseen in a century. Okay. He talks about this a lot, this idea that, and when you, when you read his speeches and you also read some of the internal facing uh, senior level communist party textbooks, the textbooks that general officers in the PLA read, they talk about the decline of the United States and chaos in Europe as though they are prerequisites for China taking advantage of this opportunity unseen in a century. So we just have to be very clear-eyed about how Xi is describing this moment. He's not describing this as a moment of how do we find guardrails? How do we avoid uh, you know, uh, an accidental war? How do we put a floor under things? That's not how he's talking when he's talking to his party leadership. He's saying, we have a moment of opportunity it's finite. We need to move. And Europe is already in chaos. And in his view, the United States is in decline. And he views those as favorable conditions for China achieving a community of common destiny for mankind, as he puts it. And as you unpack what he means by that phrase, it's not a pretty vision. This is a, a vision for remaking global governance to make it safe for authoritarianism. 